Well, chalk it up to coincidence, I guess, but a lot of you have asked me recently to start reviewing mics, and lo and behold, Elgato have a couple mics launching today that are geared specifically towards streamers, and they do more than your average mic, the Wave 1 and the Wave 3. Now, maybe you know this and maybe you don't, but I do not stream, at least not at the time of this video, so I'm not really in-depth familiar with OBS, though I have used it in the past. I've never used the GoXLR before. I've never used any kind of device routing or digital mixer software like voice meter, so you're going to have to look at your own goals and or the gear you already have and see if this is going to fit into your workflow and your setup. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the Wave 3 microphone from Elgato. Elgato is dropping two versions of this mic, the Wave 1 at $129.99, and the version we have here today, the Wave 3, available for $159.99. The Wave 3 is a condenser mic, and that means a couple of things. It's going to be more sensitive, generally, than a dynamic mic, like a Shure SM7B. What I mean by that is it can pick up more detail with less gain needs. So you're not gonna have that hiss that you get when you have to turn your preamp gain up too high. You're also gonna get a lot better like off axis. You're gonna be able to move around. You're gonna have a little bit more freedom in motion. The trade off there is that regardless of pattern, you generally need a quieter environment because the condenser is gonna pick up more background noise. In terms of build, the mic itself feels very light, very plastic. Like I wouldn't wanna drop this. The included base is weighty, silicone, non-slip bottom. It is removable and inside the bracket is threaded for a quarter inch and they do include a 5 8 inch adapter as well for mounting the common mic stands. On the rear of the body, you have a USB-C connection and a 3.5 millimeter plug for your headphones. This is for direct monitoring, which we'll talk about here in a bit. On the top, the Wave 3 has a capacitive mute, so not a physical button, just a little tap will mute and unmute, which is indicated around the dial on the front. This dial pulls triple duty between mic gain, output monitor level, and a balance between PC output and direct monitoring. For features, we have bit rate up to 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. We also have an internal pop filter filter. That's going to help cut down on those plosive sounds, those P sounds, like popping, like get it popping, like don't stop, pop that. P you also have a proprietary compression-like algorithm that they've branded ClipGuard. This enables you to get really loud, like get, yo, like let's go, like get really loud and not have to worry about clipping that signal. What you won't get included but is available as a separate purchase for $39.99 US is an external shock mount. You don't need this to mount to the Elgato multi-mount or any boom arm for that matter. You can do that with the included bracket. This just provides an extra layer of protection from vibration. To me, making this available as a separate $40 add-on for what's either a $130 or $170 mic that stings a little bit. I would think for these price points, they could have included that shock mount. And now let's get into the backbone of this system, the Wavelink software. Wavelink is a digital mixer software that provides virtual devices to the Windows 10 sound mixer, similar to how the Go XLR functions. This provides you with eight virtual channels for stuff like game audio, Discord chat, music via Tidal or Spotify or whatever, notifications, you name it. You also get different profile supports. You can switch between different mixes on the fly. You also have access to both your monitor mix, that's for your headphones, what you're hearing, and the output to stream mix which feeds OBS in one single input. It's pretty powerful in function. They say that it uses less than 1% of your CPU processing power to operate. I tested this on what I consider my dirty machine. It's got peripheral and RGB control software from like every manufacturer on it, and it ran really solid, unless I bumped it up to 96 kilohertz. It defaults to 48 right out of the box, and in that mode, it works great, flawless. But you move the 96 kilohertz, and it breaks different apps' ability to talk to the Wavelink virtual devices. Now, bear in mind, I did all my testing on early pre-release drivers. So until they get this all hashed out, just stick to 48 and you'll be fine. Also notably missing from Wavelink is any kind of like adjustable compressor, EQ, effects, etc. Now, if you happen to have a stream deck, you also gain hardware interaction with Wavelink as well. This provides a quick mute and volume control of each channel and for both your monitor and your stream output mix. Sure, it's not automated faders, but it's still nice to have the hardware functionality. And chances are, if you stream, you probably already own a stream deck of some sort anyway. All right, let's talk about this direct monitoring. Direct monitoring, zero latency monitoring, side tone, whatever you want to call it, it's a feature that's very important to me. This basically means that you can hear your mic back in your own headphones monitored in real time with no delay. Now, this almost perfectly accomplishes this. I say almost because there is a slight, very slight delay that causes like a thickening 
of the vocals. It's the same effect you would get if you were working in a studio environment and you were using like a stereo thickener plugin or a doubler plugin, or you were manually tracking doubles to get a more full vocal sound. Now the deal is, you only hear it in your headphones. It does not go out that way to the audio track at all. The audience doesn't hear it. When I record it on the track, it doesn't sound like that. So what I've attempted to do here is manually simulate this in post to give you an idea of what this is gonna sound like. If anything, it's probably a little more pronounced in the demonstration. Like I said, it's very slight, but if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, I just wanna point that out. But direct monitoring only works when you're using the Wavelink software. Like if you close the software, you do not get monitoring. And it only works if you plug directly into the mic. If you choose to route that to a different output, like your favorite DAC amp stack, you're gonna get noticeable, huge delay as that audio has to move all the way through the system. The other thing I found on these drivers is that if you're using Wavelink to output to any different audio device that's not the mic itself, you will experience a delay on everything, including your in-game audio. Like what you hear will not match up with the screen. Obviously you can forego all the software and use this just as a straight up USB mic. But if you're gonna go that route, there's probably a better way to spend the money. As the feature said, does play heavily into the value equation. All right, so for comparative purposes, we're gonna start off with like the absolute gold standard. This is one of the God tier setups out there. It's a nearly $800 input chain. So we're looking at the Shure SM7B that's going into a DBX286 vocal processor. So all of the processing that you're hearing right now is happening live. So the compression, the background noise gating, the little bit of EQ, all that is happening in real time. I did absolutely nothing to this in post whatsoever. After that, it goes into a Scarlet 2i2 and then into the system where I'm recording live via Adobe Audition. Now, because this is a dynamic mic, it is a little more sensitive to you being right in front of it versus you being off axis. If you watch streamers that use this mic, you've probably seen that before. If you get too close to it, then your plosive sounds are gonna be really enhanced. Those P's are gonna pop really hard. So you wanna maintain a pretty decent distance. In terms of noise cancellation, these are Cherry MX Browns you're hearing in the back. And I am monitoring this live as I'm recording it. So I can tell that we're still getting a lot of these key presses. Nonetheless, this is pretty much what you do if you have like no budget and you're going into broadcast or streaming. So we'll see how it stacks up. So now we're back on the Wave 3, same boom arm, same position, proper distance. They want you to have like one of these between your mouth and the mic. Because this is a condenser, I can't get off axis with this a little bit. It's a little more forgiving in that regard. The background noise cancellation though, these are the same Cherry MX Browns in the same position we heard in the last test. I can hear that these are more pronounced. It's not like a dynamic mic completely solves this. As we just heard, it doesn't, but that is one of the unfortunate trade-offs. Nonetheless, I think this thing sounds great. You're listening to this right now with no live processing and no post-processing of any kind. Now I'm on the Mod Mic USB connected directly to my headphones. This guy retails for 80 bucks. And do keep in mind, this is just a sound quality comparison because in terms of feature set comparison, this is just a mic. It has none of the features whatsoever. The only thing handy about it at all is that it's attached to your headphones, which is actually kind of bothersome for me because my mustache has a tendency to drag across the windscreen there sometimes which is horrifying to anybody on the other end of this thing. In terms of background noise, this has both like a unidirectional mode and an omni mode. We're listening in omni right now because the unidirectional, while it does a better job of filtering out those background key presses, it also doesn't sound like nearly as complete of a vocal. And finally, we're back on the Wave 3 again, but this time instead of the boom arm, we're on the stock stand and it's sitting right on the desktop. I do have this thing angled, positioned properly, but I'm about like one and a half of these away instead of being one away. To compensate for the position and the distance, I did have to raise the gain up just like one notch, but it's surprising to me that this works at all. As a tall guy, when I see a mic stand that tall, I automatically think there's no way I'm gonna be able to make this work at all, but all I really had to do is just raise the gain just a little bit to do that. Unfortunately, that brings up some of the room noise as well. Hopefully we're not getting too much of the system volume in there. My monitoring is pretty hot, so I can hear that there is more of the system volume the key presses, stuff like that is gonna be exaggerated. But nonetheless, the fact that I'm as tall as I am with 6'4", and this is still pretty much usable in this position is really surprising to me. The Wave 1, by the way, at $129.99 or $30 less than the Wave 3. If you go that way, you're gonna lose that capacitive mute, that like mute that you get right there, which is incredibly fast. I love having that right on my microphone. You're also gonna lose your input gain control, your mix crossfade, and you're gonna be permanently capped at 48 kilohertz even after they get those drivers sorted out. So the mic aspect itself is covered. I'm cool with it. $30 more than a Blue Yeti with a mountain of functionality feels like kind of a no-brainer. Though in fairness, 
I've never used the Blue Yeti. If you already have a Stream Deck, you're simply adding that tactile hardware control over your mixing, which is really nice. Even if you've got no streaming setup at all and you have to buy a Stream Deck and a Wave 3, it still just lands you right about 310 bucks. A Go XLR, when you can even get it, is gonna be 500 bucks. It's gonna give you more hardware flexibility and better hardware tactility, though you obviously would still need a mic. And the Go XLR Mini comes in at 250, strips back some of those features, and you'd probably wind up grabbing like an AT2020 for like 80 bucks, which would land you right about 330. Assuming tactile hardware external control over your mix is not important to you or it just doesn't fit in your budget, I'm sure there's a conversation to be had about using something like voice meter. There's probably even a Stream Deck profile already out there. I don't know, but I can tell you that the majority of the time, I prefer to go with something that's supported officially internally versus something that's a workaround. So I like the features, the integration with Stream Deck and the sound quality on the mic, despite the slight doubling issue on the direct monitoring and despite the fact that it pretty much lives and dies by its software. It does offer a really compelling feature set without introducing a lot of clutter to your desktop. I'm not blown away with the actual build quality of the mic itself, and I'm not a fan of the $40 add-on aftermarket shock mount. I'm not gonna sweat them too bad about the bugginess at 96 kilohertz. It's something I'm sure they'll get sorted out pretty soon. It's just something to be aware of. If you're seeing this video, it should be available right now. Links down below. As always, any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.